Welcome back all new water updates YouTube channel. We will discuss through this channel latest updates or technologies in water industries or basic idea about in water industries. Today we are going to discuss about how to prepare laboratory water or distilled water to use in different purpose of laboratory analysis in the water industries. Today we are discussing both laboratory water or distilled water we are using in laboratories. So, water used in the laboratory to prepare solutions or to rinse glassware in preparation for analytical work must be of adequately quality. It is obvious that water used to prepare standardizing solution or other reagents use it to analyze for a particular parameter must not contain a detectable amount of that parameter. What are the contaminants? It is equally important that, that laboratory what not contain materials particulates in the manner with the analysis that are or binding debris colloidal mm -hmm. material ion particles. Dissolved inorganic contaminants, calcium and magnesium silicates, iron and other metal chloride and fluoride phosphate and nitrate. Gases carbon dioxide, chloride, ammonia are the gases contaminants. Dissolved organics contaminants, pesticides, herbicides, hydrocarbons, decayed plant and animal tissue, plasticizes from piping, plumbing fixtures and plastic storage tanks. Microorganism contaminants that is bacteria, protozoa, alga, pyrogens, bacterial cell wall fragments. Next we will discuss in about that methods of lab water preparation. Few methods are there to be prepared the lab water that is distillation, RO, iron exchange, etc. We will discuss all these uh, methods in detail. In distillation, water heated to produce steam and the steam is condensed. Most contaminants are not carried over with the steam. will effectively remove all ionization solids, hardness salts, organic with boiling point greater than 212 degree Fahrenheit, bacteria and pyrogens. Without further treatment, distilled water may contain dissolved gases, ammonia, chlorine and the materials leached from storage containers and piping. Volatile organics may distill over and non-volatiles may be carried over by steam. Often stills, especially other older ones, are constructed of copper, brass or bronze coated with tin. This may be a concern if testing of for metal or for biological testing if metal contamination occurs. Field water to the still may be pretreated to improve quality of distillate and to prevent scale formation in boiler. Often hard water to remove magnesium and calcium which forms scale in boiler. Carbon filtration ahead of still removes many organics which make distill over. Mixing that ion exchanger ahead of still removes trace ion. This may be an expensive operation since the ion exchanger will quickly become spent if the field water is hard or contains high concentration of ionized materials. Cleaning of still must be done often enough to keep efficiency high must be done carefully especially in metal still to avoid scratching or chipping tin plating and with glass care must be taken to avoid breakage. Stills are usually rated in gallon per hour or liters per hour distillate producer. Larger units produce about 6 to 8 liters per hour. Since 
display is not produced on demand a storage container is required the next one is ion exchange chemical reaction where an ion from the solution is exchanged for similarly charged ion attached to an immobile solid particle synthetic organic resin most often used as immobile particle because they can tailor to specific applications in water deionization system uh, the resins exchange either h plus ions for the cation in the water metal or exchange oh minus ions for the anions in water the next one is carbon adsorption Activated carbon is granular, inorganic form of carbon which is very porous, giving it very high surface area. Many organic and some inorganic chemicals will adsorb onto the carbon. Generally used to remove chlorine and organic impurities, may be used before or after distillation process. Corn may be purchased with carbon or an exchange resin mixture. Will not remove bacteria. The next one is ultraviolet oxidation. It oxidates organic contaminants. One eighty-five nanometer UV lamp can remove organic to less than twenty. Another one is the famous method: membrane filtration removes particulate matter, removes bacteria, may con contribute some organic to water. Reverse osmosis, reclamation of precious metals, reclamation of chemicals, food processing, lab water purification. Basic principles of the osmosis or reverse osmosis: water flows from less concentrated solution to more concentrated solution through semi-permeable membrane. Reverse osmosis uses Pressure to reverse the normal osmotic flow. Water flows under pressure from more concentrated solution to less concentrated solution through semi-permeable membrane. Pressure pushes the purified water through the membrane, leaving contaminants behind. Combination of reaction is involved, both physical and chemical. Salts are rejected by membrane. Only water passes through. Large organic molecules, bacteria, and pyrogens also may be removed. Since RO removes only percentage of the fluid water contaminants, this process is usually used as a pre-treatment system for other water purification process. RO generally removes 95 percent of hardness, 85 percent of salts, 100 percent of bacteria and particulates. If you this, if you like this information, please. like and share with your friends and do subscribe and enable bell icon for more updates if you have still any questions please comment on this command box thank you for watching